We have a great program for you today. Uh, we have, as you can see, a number of folks who are uh, here to pay tribute to the, uh, Ambassador Flynn. I want to just explain today's event. So we're here to celebrate several things. We're here to celebrate the official naming of the Ray Flynn cruise port at the Black Falcon Terminal, thanks to the initiative taken by Representative Collins uh, a little bit less than a year ago to get the ball rolling. So maybe we can have a round of applause for the ambassador. We're also celebrating today the opening of the cruise season. As many of you know, last year, we we're very proud to have 115 cruise ships call at this cruise port, 115. This year, we have 150 cruise ships calling at the cruise terminal. It's amazing what changing the name will do for business. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to be a joke. That was supposed to <laughs> We also, at uh, Ambassador Flynn's uh, suggestion, have put together a history of this facility, this building, which has so many um, proud aspects to it over the various uh, ships that it's launched uh, with supplies, uh, including, you know, expeditions with, uh, with Admiral Byrd. So we look forward to making that available to you um, over the next uh, couple days. But we, we are here because of the vision of Ambassador Flynn. Uh, I think we all recognize, those of us who've been around a while, that uh, in 1986, no one could figure out what to do with this building, which is almost four buildings combined into one. But uh, somebody in those days, Mayor Flynn, had the vision to uh, see what could be possible. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, today's program has two components. I want to explain this. So we're doing this program, and then uh, some kids from the Condon School from the fourth grade and some guests of the mayor are going to board the ship for lunch. So the ship keeps things on time. So if you guys talk too long, the kids may miss their lunch. Not that I'm saying. Everybody should do whatever, yeah, see, my friend from the ship knows what I'm talking about. So people have gotten off the ship, we're going to have the special lunch, which they never do, and then uh, people will be uh, coming back to, to reboard the ship. So we ask everybody's cooperation. So the first thing we want to do is have an appropriate opening uh, here in South Boston. We're very happy that uh, very Reverend Robert Casey, the pastor of Gate of Heaven and St. Bridget's, born in Boston, ordained in 1987, and the assistant Catholic chaplain for the uh, Boston Fire Department is here today for an appropriate opening for the ceremony. So, um, Father Casey, if you can join me. Thank you. I will be short. You know, this marine park and now today the uh, cruise port of Boston, dedicated and named in honor of Ray Flynn, uh, is a perfect tribute to Ray. Uh, his ancestors came through this port when they arrived in this country and also later worked at the docks here. His home parish church of Gate of Heaven on the steps of which Ray Flynn announced his most cherished position as United States Ambassador to the Vatican uh, geographically just uh, sits a few steps away from this port. And the beautiful Gate of Heaven Church, Parish Church, uh, sits high above this port overlooking the cruise port. Uh, and with its church steeple lit each night uh, for all to see from the ships that will dock here. As, we, uh, as he walks, of course, throughout South Boston, you see Ray Flynn walking all the time through South Boston. If he walks up past that M Street Park, on Broadway with his grandchildren, Ray will look at these magnificent cruise ships uh, in this terminal named in his honor uh, for all the accomplishments that he has had and the goodness that he has provided to so many. So it's honor, an honor for me today 
as his pastor to reflect and to pray with you at this dedication. Dear Lord, we give you thanks today for former mayor and U.S. Ambassador Raymond Flind, a dedicated leader of this city of Boston for many years and a faithful son of South Boston and a faithful servant to his faith. We remember today and give thanks to all the immigrants that passed through this port as they entered this harbor, settling along the adjacent Boston Wharf and surrounding sections of this harbor, struggling to make a new home and succeeding in building a beautiful city that prides itself to this day in its varied ethnic and cultural neighborhoods. As we reflect on this day, reflect on this gathering and bless this dedication in honor of a great son of this city, we give thanks to God for all the good that he brings to us, to this city and to this country. May all of us like Ray Flynn, let us never forget that we always need to work for that which is good and honorable to make our city the best in the world. May God be with us as this cruise port is dedicated today in honor of a good and humble man that we all admire, Raymond Flynn. Amen. Thank you, Father. So uh, before I turn it over to um, Lisa, I just want to uh, recognize a number of people. So I think it's important to recognize folks because it shows you the, the breadth and the commitment that so many people involved in civic life over the years have to uh, Ambassador Flynn. Um, before I do that, I just want to mention uh, a n number of people who are here today uh, were able to attend the uh, funeral for uh, Catherine White, so we appreciate uh, people being able to, to, to do that, as, as uh, Ambassador Flynn indicated yesterday in the Herald, um, and then kind of be over here. So we know that was a, a very special uh, day and a, a sad day for many of the people in the White family and people who worked in the White administration. I also want to say, Probably most of you know Tom Tinlin's been in the hospital the last couple of days, so I sent him an email, uh, which I thought was you know pretty respectful, and then he sent me back a very wise guy answer. So I guess that means Tom Tinlin's doing really well. Um, so let me start off by recognizing uh, from the Massport board. Many of you know John Nucci, who uh, has worked with uh, Ambassador Flynn many, many uh, different uh, opportunities over the years. Um, Deb Haddon, who was the port director before Lisa, who's our legendary port director, so we want to thank her for being here today. Now, there are a lot of people from the Flynn family, but I'm going to leave uh, up to the, uh, the ambassador to figure out who he's going to recognize and who he's not. But, but I'm going to recognize Kathy because we've had a chance to do a number of events together. And Eddie Flynn, who I worked with at the Labor Department under President Clinton, who was one of the best people who worked at the Labor Department with me and Bob Reich. So I'm thrilled that he's once again thinking about uh, serving uh, in the public. Uh, Massport has a community advisory committee, and so the chairman of that, David Carlin, is here, uh, seated behind Jay Ash. Um, David Manning, who's a member from South Boston, and uh, Frank Ciano. Also, we have a number of staff people here representing uh, Senator Warren, Senator Markey, and Congressman Lynch. Obviously, since this event is on a Thursday, it was very difficult for them, so we appreciate them making sure that their offices are represented. A very important partner in the success of the uh, cruise terminal are our partners from Customs and Border Protection. And uh, they have to screen everybody getting on, everybody getting off. Uh, it's, a, you know, it's a huge job, and they do, a, they do a great job under not the best circumstances, you know, given what uh, we have to work with in terms of facilities. So we want to thank uh, Bill Ferreira, who's here, Clint Lamb, and uh, Nora Ehrlich. If they could just stand up for a second. So we have a number of uh, state officials here. Um, Senator McGee, who is the chairman of the Transportation Committee, we work with very closely. I think he may be here to pick up some tips on being a mayor. I don't know if that's really what you're thinking about there. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, uh, Senator Hines, the Senate Chair of Tourism, Corey Atkins, the House Chair, Secretary Jay Ash, who's one of the great people that we work with on a lot of projects. Why don't you just stand up for a second? Yeah, well, you know. And I also want to recognize two, two uh, great uh, former state officials, Senator Jack Hart, who was very instrumental in a lot of the success that we've had. And also, I particularly want to recognize uh, former Senate President William Bulger and his wife, Mary. You know, I had the opportunity to work with the center president when I worked at the welfare department and at the MBTA, and people who believe in public service have never had a better ally than the center president. And I know at least half of you are out there saying, why don't they let Bulger be the MC and get rid of this Glenn guy? So I appreciate your <laughs> hanging back, but if I stumble, I know you'll be up here. Um, Fred Peterson is here from the Mass Convention Center Authority. Uh, ben Lynch from the State Department of Environmental Protection, Michael Donovan, the Clerk of Court. So we appreciate all of them being here. Um, city Councilor Frank Baker, the City's Transportation Commissioner that we work with on a lot of issues. Gina Fiandaka is here. Larry Mamoli, who we've worked with for many, many years uh, on this project and this campus um, from uh, EDIC. Uh, Rich McGinnis, who we work with closely on waterfront issues, a member of the BDPA board, Tim Burke, uh, and Dan Conley, the Suffolk County DA, is supposed to be here. I haven't seen him, but I, I think he will be here shortly. Um, then from the ILA, another important partner, obviously, in the success is the cruise lines and the container ship lines. Realize if they come to Boston, they're going to have a positive experience. Things are going to go well. So uh, let me just recognize sitting in the front row, Billy McNamara, Bernie O'Donnell, <laughs> Anthony Farmusa, George McAvoy. I, did I leave somebody out? Billy Miller and Dennis McLaughlin. I did leave. Two. Didn't I say Bernie? Oh, we'll start over again. We'll start with the father and we'll, yeah, okay. We have a number of key uh, business partners, Richard Stavis from Stavis Seafood, Dana Griffin, who is uh, from Jamestown. They have been doing the design and innovation building and they keep upping the ante on uh, you know, how great the neighborhood looks. Ryan Cox from the Propeller Club, Richard Stover from Boston Pilots, and Bill Halpin from the South Boston Community Health Center, another important partner of ours, we try to send him as little business as possible. From the world of advocacy, uh, Kathy Abbott from Boston Harbor Now and Paul Grogan from the um, Boston Foundation. So, um, I think that is it. I don't see the fourth graders yet, so I. Okay, so we'll introduce the fourth graders when they show up. Okay, so um, next we want to move to the part of the program where we hear from uh, Lisa Wieland, who is the port director, who I think we all recognize is doing a great job. We've seen 30% growth at Conley. We've seen 30% growth here at the cruise. We've seen uh, roughly 30% growth at the auto port. So, you know, we have a strong economy, but we also have strong leadership. So without further ado, let me turn it over to uh, Lisa Wieland. Thank you, Tom. Good morning. I'm delighted to have all of you here today to share in this dedication of our cruise facility in honor of Mayor Flynn, and also to share in the celebration of what is going to be a truly amazing 2017 cruise season. You know, as we set out to revitalize the working port of Boston, we knew we had to take steps to make our port facilities much more competitive. And that started with improving our operational efficiencies and becoming much more customer focused. We've made Flynn Cruise Port Boston a better experience for the more than 300,000 passengers who pass through this facility each year. And we've built strong relationships with all of our industry and local partners. So I want to thank people like the city, the CBP, the ILA, port agents, the shore excursion operators, travel agents, our stevedore, law enforcement, and of course the cruise lines. Because growth like that chart shows 
doesn't happen without a great team in place all working together to make this a phenomenal operation. Growing the cruise business in Boston also means building collaborative relationships with the cruise lines and being responsive to their needs. And we couldn't have asked for a better partner in helping us with our growth strategy than Royal Caribbean International. They are one of our fastest growing cruise line customers with 23% more ship calls this year versus last year and strong growth projected for the 2018 cruise season. Royal Caribbean has also been a terrific partner in today's event. Uh, we're fortunate to have this beautiful ship here, the Anthem of the Seas, the largest ship ever to call the Port of Boston. And we're also fortunate to have one of their executives joining us. So it's my pleasure to introduce Mark Tamus, Royal Caribbean Senior Vice President of Hotel Operations. He oversees a staff of 30,000, and every aspect of hotel services across the cruise line's 24 ship fleet and private destinations. He ensures that their nearly 4 million passengers each year have a memorable vacation experience. So please join me in welcoming Mark Tamus. Thank you, Lisa. Good morning. It's an honor to be here today in Boston, recognizing Ambassador Raymond Flynn and his incredible contributions to the city of Boston, a city that's so full of history, character, and unwavering pride. Thank you to Boston and Massport for making Royal Caribbean such a part of the city and inviting us to take part today in the dedication ceremony for the Flynn Cruise Port Boston at the Black Falcon Terminal. Boston holds, Boston holds a very special place in our hearts at Royal Caribbean International, and we're very happy to be here today in South Boston to celebrate the city's growth from the very neighborhood where Ambassador Flynn, former mayor of Boston, began his public service as a member of the Massachusetts House of Representatives. Boston Harbor has seen the evolution and the innovation in the Royal Caribbean ship's fleet over the last 20 years that we've been sailing into this beautiful harbor. In fact, in 1997, when Enchantment of the Seas first sailed in, she had 2,200 guests on board. Wow, things, days have really changed. Today we welcome Anthem of the Seas with more than 4,400 guests on board. So it's on behalf of our guests who have joined us today, our 1,600 crew members who live and work on the Anthem of the Seas. In fact, I believe Captain Shreko and our hotel director, Ron, are here with us today that we are so excited to be here as part of this celebration, also representing and not forgetting the 55,000 men and women who work for Royal Caribbean on the high seas around the world celebrating here today with us. We're very excited for the upcoming cruise season, as Lisa told. We recently announced that Royal Caribbean has expanded our, ship of, our fleet here to five ships. We will be sailing a total of 26 voyages, which more than doubles our recent calls into this great city of Boston. So once again, congratulations to Mayor Flynn, Massport, the great city of Boston, and everybody who makes this town such a great place to live, work, and vacation. All of us at Royal Caribbean wish you the best this cruise season and for many cruise seasons to come. Thank you very much. So next, it's my honor to introduce Representative Nick Collins. You know, they say it takes a village, but on the other hand, somebody uh, had to take the initiative and take the leadership to get this process rolling and make sure that we had a chance to do what was really right in terms of naming this facility after Ambassador Flynn, after it was his inspiration to convert a warehouse into a cruise terminal. So we really appreciate Representative Collins' uh, leadership and persistence in getting this done. So that's why we asked him to speak first among the elected officials in recognition of his role in, uh, in making this happen. So Representative Collins. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Reverend Clergy, Mark uh, Tamas from Royal Caribbean, thank you for your uh, hosting this afternoon's um, post-gathering. Distinguished guests, residents of South Boston and beyond, Kathy, Ray, and the Flynn family, as uh, 
mentioned previously, President Bulger and his wife Mary. Uh, I think President Bulger will appreciate how this actually happened. So it was a, it was a ta the the legislation was attached to a you know, mundane land taking uh, on a street in South Boston, and and, and this is how we, we came here today. So I know that you've uh, you've seen how that works, um, but I'm honored to be with you today to celebrate the official naming of the Flynn Cruise Port at Black Falcon Terminal. I was especially honored to author, author the legislation to make it so. Uh, but before I begin my remarks, I want to say thank you to a few people from Massport who really got this project going, along with um, the, under the leadership of Tom Glenn, and that's his great team. I know Reed Passafaro worked uh, really um, heavily on this with Tom Butler, Nancy Donahue, Mike Vellaro, Liz Becker, Jose Masso, and of course, Lisa Whalen. Thank you all for your hard work on this. And if I miss somebody, I apologize. But there's much to celebrate today here at the Flynn Cruise Port, um, not just the naming of the cruise port after our former mayor and Ambassador Flynn and his legacy, but it's also the tr tr tremendous success that we see here today on the waterfront in South Boston. Uh, those statistics don't lie. And what's incredible about that, uh, particularly at Conley Terminal as well, is that this growth is happening with um, uh, less impact on the environment. So I want to thank uh, Tom Glenn and the folks at Massport for, for making that happen and making sure that we have a great environment down here at Massport. Um, but make no mistake about it, this didn't happen by accident and certainly not overnight. Over 30 years ago, under Ray Flynn's stewardship of the BRA, EDIC, and Marine Park and the promotion of the cruise industry here in Boston, magic started to happen. Uh, Ray had a vision of a waterfront that would work for everyone. Some people have scoffed that government only gets in the way down here on the waterfront. <clears throat> and that land down here that's owned by the public should just be sold to the highest bidder. On the contrary, it's because of government and leaders like Ray Flynn, Tom Glenn, Brian Golden, and others uh, who are involved down in this waterfront as government employees that make this waterfront work for everybody. With a mix of businesses down here that employ thousands of blue collar and middle class jobs as we as a city and state struggle in the global economy, not just to preserve jobs, but especially to grow them. And that's what's happening on the South Boston waterfront. There are a few people to thank for this, and I'd like to thank um, Speaker Robert DeLeo, who will be speaking later on, who since I've been a member of the House of Representatives has made it a, his mission to grow blue collar jobs in our state. So when I met with Speaker and Tom Glenn several years ago to discuss investing in our port, the, the, the Speaker didn't blink an eye. And since then, hundreds of millions of dollars have been spent down here to improve uh, the quality at Massport and to dredge our Boston Harbor and the Reserve Channel so that post Panamax sh uh, ships and the shipping industry across, across the globe know that Boston is a serious place to do business. Uh, I know he's not here today, but he's being represented by Congressman Lynch for his work at the federal level, Senator Forey for her work in the Senate, and it was m mentioned briefly, but particularly the ILA, who sat down to negotiate a contract um, that, ref that re reflected uh, a competitive nature, driving productivity, that sent a signal across uh, the entire industry that, um, that, that the union was, was ready to work with, uh, with business and Massport to make this port great. So I want to thank you guys for stepping up to the plate to do that because I know it wasn't easy. <clears throat> and finally, uh, Governor Baker for signing off on this, f with this funding. I know he's not here, but that must be nice. All he had to do was sign a piece of paper. But all that's going on today uh, begs the question, how do we get here? So in 1984, Ray Flynn became mayor of Boston on a, mission to, uh, on a mission to unite the city and make it work for everyone. So his stewardship down here in Marine Park and, and leading, helping lead the Boston Harbor cleanup brought new life and interest to, South, to the South Boston waterfront, working with the city, the state, the federal officials, and most especially active citizens Ray played an instrumental role in the cleanup of Boston Harbor, proving that environmental stewardship at Boston's port was not just a good thing for our environment and good politics, but it was also good business. So there's no doubt about it. If it wasn't for Ray Flynn's activism and the activism of the people like Vivian Lee, Valerie Burns, and other environmental activists in our city, the waterfront would not be what it is today. And that's the story today. What's amazing is how long it took to see the fruit of your labor particularly in public service. So Ray and to the entire Flynn family administration, this must be sweet. Not because your name rests on the edifice behind us 
and signs all over the park, but because you are seeing a city and a community in better shape than you found it, for my generation, for your grandkids' generation, and, and beyond. <clears throat> a cleaner harbor, the cleanest in America, actually, at this point. A growing port. <laughs> a growing port with blue sector, uh, blue collar sector jobs as much growing as our white collar jobs. And that, that can't be said every, every, to every metropolis in, uh, in, the, in the, the country that has a growing port, particularly the hospitality industry. A better economic environment, a better environment for everyone, I couldn't think of a better legacy. In the spirit of today, I'm calling on my colleagues in government and citizen activists to pick back up Ray's torch. We are facing some major strategic decisions in the coming months about the future of our waterfront here in South Boston. And the questions are begged. Can we make, can we make sure uh, that our, our communities have public amenities, have public access, have open space on our waterfront? Some say, well, I'm, uh, I don't know if we can. I, I think we can, I think we should, I think we must. And if you are unsure, I'd ask yourself to, if I book and borrow a phrase, what would Ray do? So thank you, uh, Ray, Kathy, and the entire Flynn family for your service, your lifetime of service. I'm honored to be a state representative and honored to call you a friend. So I'm going to rearrange things a little bit because uh, I know Council Flaherty has a uh, doctor's appointment with one of his kids, so I'm going to ask him to come up next so we make sure that uh, he uh, is on time. I don't know what. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. That's a, we're, we're all falling apart in the Flaherty household, I guess. But uh, but uh, thank you, uh, Tom. Obviously, and we've, we've all heard a lot about uh, recently about the new zoning in South Boston with the height limits at 40 feet. But a uh, good thing for Massport and for the Flins, they didn't include the ships. <laughs> Mother of God, that thing is huge. But. Uh, but uh, on, uh, on behalf of Mayor Walsh, also want to bring greetings. He's representing the city, at, uh, as mentioned, at uh, former Mayor White's uh, wife's uh, services today. So uh, he did send, obviously, Brian Golden from the BPDA, and he also sent Gina Fiendaka, who's the uh, head of our transportation department, uh, and wanted to bring his greetings. And so also on behalf of my colleagues, uh, this is an exciting day. It's an exciting day for the Flynn family, uh, for their great work and dedication, not just to South Boston, but for the entire city. It's a great day for our longshoremen, uh, 2,000 jobs. That's going to be exciting stuff for, for your members as these ships continue to come in. And it's also an exciting day for South Boston and for the entire city uh, as those tourists come in uh, ship after ship and they get to learn about where it all started, which is right here at Dorchester Heights, and get out to Fort Independence, to get out to Castle Island, and to spend their hard-earned dollars at our shops and our restaurants and making sure that we continue to move our city and our economy forward. So exciting stuff. It's uh, thanks to large tribute to the York uh, commitment, uh, Tom, into the partnership that exists with Massport, the South Boston community, and the entire city. And so I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful to be invited. Uh, and uh, hopefully folks will enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you and God bless. Thank you. Uh, so uh, as uh, Nick indicated, he did a great job managing the bill through the House, but uh, Senator Dorsina Fori had the responsibility of making sure that the bill renaming the uh, cruise terminal was also had a speedy uh, path through the Senate. So, uh, you know, she's been uh, an ally with us as well. Uh, as Representative Collins mentioned, you know, we've had a lot of success uh, with getting money for the dredging and the backlands. So we appreciate the cooperation that they have between the House and the Senate. So without further ado, let me introduce Senator Linda Dorsina Fori. Good morning, everyone. It is great to be here with all of you. I want to thank you, Tom, um, for your incredible leadership at Massport and working with an incredible group of folks, right, that continue to stay connected every day in and day out and making sure that the work that Massport does here 
on the waterfront is connected to the community of South Boston and to all of Boston. So thank you again for your leadership. I am excited to be here today with all of you to kick off the start of an another exciting um, season of cruise ships here at the Flynn Cruise Port in Boston, right here on the South Boston waterfront. But it's more special, isn't it? because we're naming um, the dedication today for our mayor and our ambassador, um, Raymond Flynn, who's done so much and committed so much to our great city. And so many people have been recognized already. Kathy, once again, we gotta give it up to Kathy, right? Because Kathy, you know, as a woman, as a mother of four, had more children than I did, but you know, she held it down so that Mayor Ray Flynn, Ambassador Flynn, um, you know, can continue to work with our city and really craft a vision um, from, for this great area right here. We have incredible elected officials. So many people have been mentioned already. You know, this is a true partnership. You know, it, it's government working together, both state and city. I wanna thank my colleague, Rep Collins, for his leadership and pushing forth um, for the naming and renaming of this cruise port um, for Ray Flynn. I wanna thank the city City councilors, and you're gonna, you heard from Michael Flaherty, but Bill Lenihan, you know, our mayor, um, who continues to do great work, the leadership of Speaker DeLeo. I was a House member before a Senate member, so I gotta recognize, you know, Speaker DeLeo. Um, but obviously, in terms of the Senate, Senate President Rosenberg. So when we brought this to his attention, you know, he was right on board and he was happy to help move it forward. But again, there are folks who are here that are sitting here that were here before I got here as the state senator. And one of the leaders, wow, the wind was strong. <laughs> and one of the uh, giants, you know, is sitting before us today, and that is President Bill Bulger. And so we thank you again, but it's true. We thank you, you know, for your determination and your leadership, not just here and moving this forward, but also on education, when we talk about libraries, when we talk about public higher education like UMass system, you know, it started with you. So we're grateful for that. And thank you, Mary, um, for the, all the work that you've done. I see a state rep that has served in the legislature with us and represented this great community called South Boston. And I can't speak without recognizing Representative Brian Wallace. Thank you for being here, Brian. And I wanna thank our governor, and you're gonna hear from Governor Baker shortly. Thank you for your work and your team's work. Um, Secretary Ash, I continue to call him up for different things, and they're there making sure that this community, but communities in our city is represented and continues to get funding. Um, also wanna recognize my colleague in the Senate. We said um, Senator Tom McGee, um, Chair of Transportation, but a new senator, been here about three months now, and he is the Senate Chair of the Committee on Tourism, Arts, and Cultural Development, and that's Senator Adam Hines, who's here. So wait. But this is an important day, an important day, you know, to recognize the work of uh, Ambassador and Mayor Ray Flynn, um, the important vision, being someone as someone born and raised in South Boston, but that worked right here. Right here as a longshoreman, worked right here, you know, on this waterfront is very important. And as we look at and, and see the signs, right, every day as we drive by, I think it's telling and moving the words that are marked on this building. It says, it is the mark of Boston's grace, greatness that the hopes which unites us are much stronger, stronger than the fears that divide us. Very important in light of everything that we're feeling and we're hearing on the national side or even here in our great city, in our great state. You know, we are in this together. And that is what's beautiful today because we're recognizing someone who had the vision to create um, what we're celebrating today. But you know, we cannot forget as we do this and celebrate the Flynn Cruise Port here in Boston and the work of Massport and the interagencies and everyone, we cannot forget the eight brave longshoremen who lost their lives working on the Norwegian ship, the Black Falcon. 
and the longshoremen's who work the docks here at Flynn Cruise Port and across the water at Conley Terminal are an integral part of this tremendous economic growth that results from the activities taking place here. Very important, because as you see new buildings go up, as you see new businesses move in, technology, biotech, into this waterfront, we recognize there was economic development and growth here before. Now it's taken a whole new scale. We remember and recognize the work of, of the fishermen right here on our piers, right? Not so far away that continue to work hard. The Marine Park Business Association, we recognize the work and, and help in and, and, and helping them to continue to strive and thrive in our great commonwealth because we wanna make sure they stay here as well. I wanna recognize the Longshoremen's Union's partners, um, partnering with Massport to ensure safe working conditions for our families here in our great state. And the economic opportunity that is spread not only in companies doing business on these docks, but to the working families in our neighborhoods. I want to recognize some of the leadership which were recognized before, but Billy Mc McNamara, um, International Vice President. Billy Miller, President of Local 800. Thank you for being here. The Atlantic Coast Vice President, Bernie O'Donnell, Business Agent, George McAlvery. Local 16, 1604 business agent and President Anthony Farmusa and local business agent Dennis McLaughlin. And as I was coming in, you know, I met a longshoreman, Mike Murray, who's here with his son, Dempsey, 11 years old, the next generation. So I want to thank them for their work here on our waterfront. You know, the cruise industry in Massachusetts generates over 8,000 jobs. You heard that here today. Over 320 something thousand people come and visit our great commonwealth right here, starting right here in South Boston. So it's important that we take the time to say thank you. Thank you for the leadership of Tom. Thank you for everyone coming to the table and saying this is an important industry. This is an important economic opportunity here in our state, and we're going to make sure it continues to grow and thrive as we move our great commonwealth forward, as we move the city of Boston forward, but more importantly, as we continue to build and support families right here in South Boston. Thank you all and God bless. So we just want to do a quick time check here. So are the fourth graders from the Condon School here? Raise your hands. Are you hungry for lunch? So that's the only thing standing between you and lunch or my friends over here. So we'll <laughs> We'll see. If you guys get real hungry, just stand up and they'll get the signal. So um, I want to make a special introduction to Councillor Bill Linehan, who is one of the great people in our community. We've had many, many meetings with the uh, folks, uh, the elected officials from South Boston. And um, I have to say, Bill Linehan gets to the heart of the matter after a long discussion. He said, well, I'm really saying it. Boom. So, you know, given that... Um, He's made a decision about his future and his career. I just want to make sure we give him a special welcome because he is one of the great guys, Bill Linehan. Uh, thank you very much, Tom. And uh, I just want to say uh, to you, um, Tom Glenn, in your tenure as the leader of Massport, which has such a great impact on our, our community and my district, I want to thank you for the cooperation, the dedication, and the willingness to continue to communicate whether we agree or not and always come up with a good solution for what's best for Boston. Thank you for your contribution to Boston and to all the people that work for you. Uh, it's an honor for me to be here, of course. Uh, the good thing is I don't have to go out and get nomination signatures this week. And uh, that's where Flaherty went to use the excuse that <laughs> um, and I also want to uh, recognize uh, Paul Gannon. He was also a state rep that was here. I think he's here. He, he was here earlier. I recognize him. And now that Mike left, I can mention that, you know. You Southie folks get that. Yeah. I want to uh, uh, thank the governor because I was in his office on the day that he signed this uh, legislation and it was a very unique situation because he, in, he invited the, 
the entire Flynn family, and he's got a pretty big office, and we didn't fit. And, um, and, and, and for taking the time to recognize the contribution of those who come before you. You know, and that's what we're doing here. This isn't just about Raymond L. Flynn, the state rep, the city councilor, the mayor, the ambassador, or the continued contributor to the city of Boston and to the state. This is about thinking, of, uh, recognizing the work that gets done before us. The foundations that have been left here, uh, Ray Flynn is part of those foundations. Not just of this, these docks and this park and this cruise terminal, or not just of South Boston, but of this state and really nation, because he served the nation as ambassador and even the great Catholic religion. So um, he, he is a foundation for all of us who came after him. And there are many, many that came before who, who we've recognized in the past. And we still have some that we still have to recognize and uh, for their great contribution to the city and their state. So I want to thank Massport. I want to thank the governor. Uh, I'm surprised Nick got up and spoke before the speaker, because I would have never done that, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> and uh, I, everybody here, you, you honor the work that gets done. And that's what Ray Flynn was all about. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor, I, I think. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, as uh, Michael mentioned, you know, uh, the mayor's had a lot of involvement in helping us to put this together. Uh, obviously, uh, he is at the, uh, the funeral of, of Catherine White, but we're very fortunate that not only uh, Gina Fiandaka is here representing him, but also, you know, Brian Golden. So, for those of us who are familiar with this neighborhood, realize it's a patchwork quilt of, of ownership of land and of facilities. And so I think the collaboration that we've established uh, with Brian since uh, he took responsibility for uh, the BRA, now Boston Planning and Development, has really produced a lot of great successes for the citizens uh, of this neighborhood. And uh, you know nothing comes easily in this town, so we, we have to s sort things through and work things out. But he's a, he's a great partner, he's a great representative for Mayor Walsh, and I know he wants to uh, say a few words on behalf of the mayor. And uh, you know, I know the mayor is with us in spirit. And we did have an event many of you attended last November, where he, uh, the mayor, uh, took the initiative of renaming the um, the Marine Park after the after uh, Ambassador Flynn. So, without further ado, Brian Golden, uh, a great leader of the BPDA. Thank you so much, Tom. And again, Mayor Walsh regrets that he can't be here this morning with us. He's at Mrs. White's funeral. But, it, but it's indeed a privilege for me to offer remarks on his behalf as we rename the Black Falcon Terminal the Raymond L. Flynn Cruise Port Boston. Uh, congratulations to Ambassador Flynn and his family for this deserving recognition. Last year, we at the Boston Planning and Development Agency officially renamed our Marine Industrial Park after Ambassador Flynn, who for many years fought the good fight seeking to redevelop this port um, and advancing the safety of its workers. I had the good fortune personally of experiencing Mayor Flynn's leadership as a high school student um, while at Latin school. I was an intern working in his city council office in 1981. He soon became mayor, and we all watched with admiration as he turned the city away from the turmoil of the late 1970s. As its leader, he made Boston a place that was more prosperous, more peaceful, and ultimately more just. He set the conditions for a Boston that would flourish even more in the 90s and the 21st, 21st century by respecting the dignity of every human being and committing himself to improving life for all of them. So 
So thank you, Ambassador Flynn, for your role in creating one of the great cities of the world. Here at the cruise port, we'll continue to showcase that reality, and we're proud that it will bear your name. So I'm honored to join you, Ambassador Flynn, and our state and local officials to highlight our shared goal, to make Boston, and indeed the whole Commonwealth of Massachusetts, a major international destination for visitors. In Boston, the cruise industry supports good jobs and helps fuel our economy. It's helping Boston expand its tourism sector and bring visitors from all over the world to our city to learn about our history, our culture, and to drive our economy for the greater good. The City of Boston and the Boston Planning and Development Agency will continue to work with Massport to invest in and protect our cruise industry and this cruise port in order to connect visitors from around the world to our doorstep. Congratulations, Ambassador Flynn, and to you and your wonderful family who mean so much to all of us. Thank you so much. So, you know, those of us who care about the port are, um, uh, are very uh, advantaged, I guess I'll say, by the fact that Speaker DeLeo uh, has been the speaker for a number of years, and so he's been able to produce some very important successes for the port. He represents a, uh, a waterfront harbor community, so he understands the issues. He has a long-standing relationship with the ILA, and so when we go in to talk to him about issues, as Representative Collins mentioned, you know, we can really get to the heart of the matter very quickly because he really understands what we do, what we're trying to do, and so it's a great honor for me to introduce Speaker DeLeo, who has helped us in so, so many ways. Speaker DeLeo. Before I make my remarks, I also want to mention Representative Kevin Honan, who is here uh, as well. And to Tom Glenn, thank you uh, so much. And thank you for such a, putting me in such a prime spot to speak here uh, today. I'm a bit sunburned and whatnot, but, uh, But you know what? You can partly make out, see these flowers here? These would look awful nice coming into Winthrop on the Massport uh, uh, property. And my office always knows when I'm going to South Boston because I always wear a green tie. All right? I just give it away just, 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 just like that. Um, and, and just so you also know, this is the closest that I will ever get to that ship. I get seasick. I get terribly seasick, so I hope you all have a very, very nice lunch, okay? Because <laughs> I'm not going to be even close to being there, okay? And it looks such like a beautiful ship, but well, never mind. I don't want to cause any problems with people going on ships later on and whatnot. But um, it's such an honor to be here uh, for the ambassador at this event to name, rename the Black Falcon Terminal uh, for him. When I heard from the members of the Boston delegation, in particular Representative Collins, you've borne out your welcome in my office now for the next five years. Okay, and yes, I am gonna still be there in five years. <laughs> um, and when I first heard about the idea of naming this cruise ship uh, terminal for Mifflin, I thought it was so fitting. Here we have a man who not only served our city as mayor and the informal ambassador for Boston, but who later served as an ambassador for our nation as well. It is my honor to pay tribute to this mayor who helped transform not only the city of Boston, but its politics as well. Today we look at Mayor Walsh and we see him at events across the neighborhoods from, of, of Boston from Dorchester to West Roxbury, from South End to Charlestown. And we think of mayors, we think that mayors have always done that, but they, but they didn't. It began with a mayor who would travel in a wood-paneled station wagon, 
license plate 576, where he would travel to parks, to housing developments, community centers, and police stations across the city. Sometimes he would even stop and play basketball with some of the children from the neighborhoods as well. And I'm told he even played basketball with reporters, uh, which maybe I gotta take up basketball. <laughs> and um, even that license plate reflected his commitment to the city and its history. The numbers 576 corresponded to the numbers of the letters in the name of James Michael Curley. You like that one, huh? That's a good one. As Speaker of the House, I'd be remiss if I didn't point out that Mayor Flynn was previously a member of the House of Representatives. We produce great mayors, I have to tell you. Tommy, you can say that you started there. Um, and it was at the House of Representatives where he fought for his districts amongst colleagues from all over the state. But now when we have tourists and travelers from all over the world, when they come to Boston, they will immediately learn about an official who did so much to shape this great city. And that's our great mayor and ambassador, Ray Flynn. Thank you all for having me. You know, it appears that we must have had a microphone malfunction because when the speaker said he was still going to be the speaker in five years, that was supposed to be an applause line. So maybe you can make up for it now. Yeah. So it's a great honor for me to be able to introduce uh, Governor Baker. You know, I think uh, we couldn't have a, a, a better, bigger supporter of the Port of Boston, a better, bigger supporter of the neighborhood of South Boston. When he made one of his first appointments, uh, Secretary Pollack to be the Secretary of Transportation, I think we can safely say she probably knows more about the maritime business than any previous Secretary of Transportation. And so it's been very, very uh, easy for us to work with her and, and we don't have to explain kind of all the dynamics and the importance, as was said, of the seven or 8,000 jobs that are here. Um, Governor Baker has supported us in getting the state uh, funding for the dredging project, which is uh, imminent. He supported us uh, under the uh, leadership of his secretary, uh, Jay Ash, in getting a big commitment of $107 million to do something about expanding Connolly. So again and again, when we've gone to him, he has been there to make sure that we have a strong economy, a strong working port, a strong number of blue collar jobs you know, in this neighborhood as a result of all the activities that have gone before. And he, as was mentioned, he had a great signing ceremony for um, this bill when the uh, uh, cruise terminal was renamed. So I, we really appreciate the fact that he was able to be with us today. And uh, you know, I know he's a big fan of uh, Mayor Flynn and Mayor Walsh and the city, and particularly of South Boston. So please welcome Governor Charlie Baker. So thank you, Tom, and, and Mr. Speaker, I want to congratulate you for getting a much better spot in the speaking order than I got. Um, first of all, uh, when you come up after 11 other people have spoken and those poor kids out there are just dying to eat lunch, um, you realize that it's all been said and uh, the only big issue is it hasn't been said by everybody. So what I'm going to do is just tell uh, one story. and. Uh, I remember when this was working its way through the legislature and we were all rooting for it to pass and, and I give huge kudos to the speaker and the Senate president and their colleagues for getting it done. And we did invite the entire clan uh, of the Flynn family to come to the signing ceremony and, um, and we all managed to squeeze in and I'm looking at these pictures over here and remembering what a nice day that was. But there was one reason in particular why we really wanted to make a big deal out of it, and that's because, and it's been spoken to already by a number of the folks who've spoken here, it's because Ray Flynn really was one of those people who worried and thought and worked for everybody uh, in whatever role he had in the, in the public sector. And 
I remember when I was a, a young kid serving in a new administration under Bill Wild and Paul Salucci as Undersecretary of Health and Human Services. And um, I had a lot on my plate and I worried about a lot of stuff. And, and I went over to see the mayor at the Parkman House uh, because he had asked me to come visit him. And when the mayor calls, you go visit. That's kind of what you do. Um, by the way, I still do that. Um, and, uh, and he said, I want to talk to you about uh, homeless individuals in the city of Boston. And he didn't talk about it generically. He talked about specific people whose lives he was quite familiar with, whose family histories he knew all about. And it was clear to me as he talked about this that these were people as individuals to him. They weren't a group, they weren't a class, they weren't a segment of society. They were each, in their own way, a special and important individual to him. And he closed it all by talking about Jimmy the Broom, who got that nickname because whenever he was homeless and in a shelter, he would pick up a broom and start sweeping the place to keep it clean, because that was his way of contributing to the fact that he was being given a meal and a place to sleep. And I left, I took a lot of notes that day and I left that meeting and I said, Mr. Mayor, we'll, we'll figure out how to do something about this. And we worked with our colleagues in the legislature and others to create what eventually became an award-winning housing development program for people with mentally ill, who were mentally ill, both in the city of Boston and around the Commonwealth. And, um, and I'll tell you something, Ambassador, I will never forget that was, that was a really long time ago. But I will never forget sitting there with you in the Parkman House and listening to you speak so passionately and with so much detail about the lives of these men and women who really needed somebody like you to serve as their champion. And I think it speaks in many ways to who you are and what you care about and why you got into public service in the first place. And I think this particular cruise port is a wonderful opportunity for us to all recognize and appreciate the way you played politics and the way you approach public service. And that's why I'm here today. And Tom Glenn, who has done a fabulous job as the head of Massport, also mentioned that uh, I seem to be particularly interested in South Boston. I am, for a couple of reasons. One is, I think South Boston is a wonderful place. It's filled with all kinds of great people, um, and it's been a real joy to watch it sort of morph and change over the course of the past 10 or 15 years. Um, but the other thing is, I have a 23-year-old son who, like every other 20-year-old I know on the eastern seaboard, lives in South Boston. <laughs> and even though, you know, he sleeps in the kitchen because it's eight guys in a family, in an apartment with three bedrooms, um, and he complains all the time about what he pays in rent, he still manages to stand in line with the thousands of other 20-somethings outside all those great places to play. Uh, that are all over South Boston, and, uh, and it truly is a great community, and we are as an administration, whether it's Jay Ash or Stephanie Pollack or Steve Kadish or whomever in our administration, enormously pleased to have had opportunities to work to build on all the success and the foundation that's been laid here year over year over year by the working people of this community, by its elected public officials, and by so many others who've been part of the great success that is this cruise port, this terminal, and this part of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Thank you very much. You know, it says a lot about the governor that he remembered that story and he told it here today because that's the kind of person he is. He has the same values that he's congratulating the mayor for. So now it is my honor to uh, introduce Ambassador Flynn. So uh, as we've said, you know, he was a visionary in 1986. This was a dilapidated warehouse 
The first year that it was a cruise terminal, we had 13 ships and 11,000 passengers. As we've said, this year we have 150 ships and almost 400,000 passengers. So it's, it's the vision, it's the tenacity to see the vision through, it's the ability to solve problems along the way. And uh, so this is a great uh, example of uh, many of the things that happened in his administration. And um, Senator Sinafori read the quote on the building, so I will not read it again. I will just say that, you know, that quote could have been said the day after the election or the day after the inauguration. So it's a very meaningful quote. So it's one of the reasons why we thought it was the, the perfect quote to, um, to put on the building to try to uh, have a, uh, an inclusive message uh, in this day and age. So uh, as we uh, introduce the ambassador, uh, I was going to suggest that maybe we give him a standing ovation in a, if that's okay with you guys. Thank you, Tom, and thank all, the, all of you for being here today and sharing a very special moment with, with my family, myself, and all these distinguished political leaders. I don't know why I do this all the time, but for years, even as mayor or United States ambassador, wherever I would go, I'd spend countless hours preparing to have something relevant to say to the group of people that I'm going to address. This would happen countless times in Europe and Africa, here in Boston, across Massachusetts. And it seemed like every time I did, like I did here t in preparation for this event, I never say, I never read what I prepared to say. And take my word for it, it would be a great speech. <laughs> but I'm afraid I just can't deliver it. And my daughter, Nancy, read it. She says, uh, Maureen, she said, it's great, Dad. Yeah, OK, but I'm not delivering it. <laughs> the reason why I'm not is because of the fact that when you're sitting here and you spend so many years in politics, living with people that you love, admire, respect, watching dock workers here at such an early age that I did, seeing those heroic and courageous men of the International Longshoremen's Association and what they contributed, watching our church, watching our community leaders, watching our political leaders, you come away with an experience that you can't write. You only can speak from your heart. And that's what I'm, do doing, I'm going to do now. When Governor Baker told that story about Jimmy the Broom, I had no idea I thought he'd be talking about some major development or something that took place in Boston while I was mayor or some event. He's talking about a, a man, a homeless man, who died out in the streets, frozen to death. I happened to go by and see him, called the police, the ambulance, brought him to the hospital. We had a religious service. There's hardly anybody there because nobody knew who this guy was. Nobody knew his, his name. Tom, when you introduced me, they, the music played. Did you notice that? And the song was a program that I used to appear on, on television, from Cheers. It's a program called, the theme of the music was where everybody knows your name. Well, Jimmy the Broom was one of our citizens of Boston. Nobody knew his name. 
So that pretty much is what is and what has been important to me my whole life. Yes, Tom, I appreciate and Nick, the governor, Bobby DeLeo, I appreciate the naming of this cruise port where I worked, where my father worked, where Kathy's father worked, where I saw troops coming in from the Second World War, where I saw caskets coming in, hundreds of them, where I saw my father getting carried off a ship, going to the hospital for the incurable because he was sick, Kathy's father getting his leg crushed right here, 35 yards from here, never to be able to work again. But I saw countless of these stories, so it, examples. So it's kind of hard for me to stay up half the night preparing to address you, which I, I'm honored to, and talk about, not about myself, but just talk about things, the city in, in general, when there are so many emotional stories and experiences that I've had over the years. My friends, I consider myself the luckiest man in the world. Not because I was elected to be the mayor of Boston, or not because I represented the, the United States of America across the world for the Catholic Church, but because I had the privilege and the opportunity to meet so many remarkable people. And not only that, I had a remarkable opportunity to help them. That's what it's all about. That's what government is all about. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I'm proud that my name will forever be on this building. But you know what? I could easily point out to 200, 300 men and women whose name should be right alongside my name as well. It would start with Billy McNamara and the McLaughlin and Bernie, all these dock workers, longshoremen. They're special. They're the people who built this city. They're the people who sacrificed and contributed. Let me just end by saying this is a very positive, optimistic day here for our family and we're able to, we're pleased we're able to share it with you. But it always wasn't this way. Times were tough. A lot of people like me were counted out, and they still are. That's why I will never stop, and obviously you will never stop, to keep fighting for those values that are so important to this country. It wasn't the great buildings of downtown Boston that made, made this city great, as important as they are. It wasn't our legendary sports teams that gave this city notoriety. It was just decent, honorable people that I happen to have the privilege of working with, yes, helping with, that made me a better person and made this city, hopefully, a better place. My friends, share in this experience that I had with yourself. Think about it, because it is really about you as much as it is about me or anyone else. This is your day. I'm not gonna read the speech, but if you want a copy of it, I'll mail it to you. <laughs> So if I can ask everybody to quickly take their seat, we are going to have a closing from Reverend Gerald Souza, who many of you know 
He serves out of the South Boston Seaport Catholic Collaborative. He was instrumental in the rebuilding of Our Lady of Good Voyage Chapel, and he was ordained by Cardinal O'Malley in 2013. And when he concludes, we're gonna have a ribbon cutting in front of the stage. So I ask everybody who's in the audience to sit tight, and then we'll ask uh, Senator Timothy and C Councilor Yancey, who have joined us, also to be part of the ribbon cutting. Uh, and then um, we're gonna start moving the fourth graders uh, because we're actually on schedule. Who would have believed it? <laughs> so uh, again, uh, let me turn it over to Reverend Sousa for some closing uh, comments. Like so many of us, the first time I met the ambassador was on the TV, <laughs> seeing in the newspaper. Um, but when I was ordained as being the, the junior man, sometimes you get tasked with odd jobs. And one of the odd jobs was to go pick up the mayor and his lovely wife so we could go to an event at the seminary. And as we drove from South Boston over to St. John's, which is in Brighton, I was so struck and honored and struck as we drove through the city and you pointed out so many different projects that you'd worked on, people that you met at different things, and then showed us what it is now but what it started from. Um, and I was so impressed by your love for the city and for the legacy which is still here. Let us bow our heads in prayer. We read in Psalm 107. Some went off to the sea in ships, plied their trade on the deep waters. They saw the works of the Lord, the wonders of God in the deep. He commanded and roused a storm wind it tossed the waves on high. They rejoiced that the sea grew calm, that God brought them to the harbor they longed for. Lord, we thank you for gathering us here today to dedicate the Raymond L. Flynn cruise port and to kick off the 2017 cruise season. Make this a place of welcome and a safe harbor of peace. Protect the people who will travel to here and from here. We pray all of this through the intercession of Our Lady of Good Voyage, and we ask God that you send your blessings upon us through Christ our Lord. Thank you, Father. So as I mentioned, if everybody on the stage can step in front of the flowers which are on their way to Winthrop. <laughs> hey, first dibs, you guys could, uh, you know, you guys instead, you waited and now they're gone. Everybody on the stage could go in front of the stage and also the other elected and appointed officials, if you could come up and be part of the ribbon cutting, that would be great. So you can go either way. <laughs> 